Okay, hello everybody. Um, now we are starting the final final review of the workshop uh, of hierarchy in geometric orders and agent behavior as a part of a digital futures world uh, event series. So uh, now uh, today is a final review. Uh, so participants worked on the other design project and then uh, so we wanna for each of you uh, is going to present uh the final work so um maybe i should just start so let, let me just uh, call uh, name of each participant and then i'm gonna ask you to share your screen and then play the presentation video of yours and uh, then I wanna hear some um, uh, like feedback and give comments on that. I think that's how I wanna uh, run that review today. So let me start. Uh, so first I wanna ask you, uh, from Nakapa, can you start your presentation? Good morning. morning. So I just um, present my video. It's called binary curve. about it in the way like uh, showing that to people who never seen your work okay so um my inspiration is this um curve that is like from traditional thai curve but i have this reference um, from a picture it's called Ginnery, which is a mythological creature, have woman, have bird. And this um, pattern comes from the tale of the Ginnery. So I am inspired from this curve to create um, a simple deep wavy curve in processing. So I saw it the best of like this. And I just like um, present a an early version of it, how I experimented, like here, with some more branching until more complex branching that I keep adding my code. And this one are 2D, and the last one is the 3D. here yeah this become like 3d um, branching that's all mm -hmm. okay yeah i think that uh interesting to see the actually the the final geometry is really uh getting closer to not really closer but like uh it, it's it, you clearly uh, see the connection uh between the reference and then uh, mm -hmm. but the point like uh, when this uh uh, becoming something else. I mean, yes, 3D looks totally something else, but even before the like, so let me ask you this. So, so that reference image, where is that pattern usually used? Is that like a part of a uh, facade or a tower or wall pattern or? It's, it's yeah. a part of decorative um, elements in Thai architecture and art. Yeah, but do, does it usually uh, show up as 3D, like a sculpture thing, or it's um, more 2D drawing yeah. pattern? 
um, it can be 2D and 3D. Right. So, so um, like you have told me to try experiment the 3D or surfaces. Yeah. Yeah, I, ha yeah, I have tried. Yeah, that part is good. Just, not just uh, like uh, yeah. try to say like uh, the moment you kind of went the uh, different direction, which is kind of interesting and that that's kind of creative effort. So that's mm -hmm. kind of, and then, but first you, in a way kind of a first, uh, maybe just uh, you start as kind of 2D pattern. So that was somehow on the, ground in the simulation and then then uh so he was in the beginning he was saying 2d and then once you went 3d yeah you got the branch and then but you i mean you, you maintain certain sensibility of the original pattern i mean which is not necessarily uh important thing but like but you you kind of uh combine uh, one existing uh, aesthetics to another different uh, aesthetics and but one interesting thing I mean to me is that somehow you are branching a 3D branching system maintain 90 degree only in uh, one of elevation yeah. do you know why yeah because I, I put a 90 degree pine divided by two in the script that's right. why um, when I rotate uh, around y axis, it's 90 degrees. Okay, you rotate it around 90 axis, uh, y axis. Yeah. Okay, so you specifically uh, uh, chose y axis to rotate and 90 degrees, and then somehow, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, it became like that. And then the interesting thing is that it didn't break the original pattern. You still see the, the continuous curvature. Yeah. And I mean, you, some, you see some of the straight line going like a uh, y direction, but. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a nice balance of having two of them. So yeah, the 3D pattern, this, uh, I think this looks uh, interesting. And then like start thinking about like uh, what can you do with it? it would be interesting thing to think about next. Like, so right, right now it's a very abstract pattern. I mean, as even as 3D or even 2D. So, but like if you want to make it, I mean, just uh, like uh, putting mesh around it and 3D print is a super easy thing to do. But the, the thing is, like, if you want to use, make some, like, for example, furniture out of this, or if you want to make a building out of it, you have to adjust many things. I mean, structurally or material wise. Et but that, that kind of a challenge or constraints mm -hmm. is not limiting in design. Actually, it opens up your um, opportunity to design what I got. You could bring new rules to your system, which okay. uh, make it actually more sophisticated because, for example, if you want to have this uh, certain object or whatever thing to stand on the ground, you, in that case, you have to make sure that the bottom is somehow uh, kind of aligned to be to stand up, right? So if it's leg, they need to be or if you, but, but anyway, so that, that would uh, make you rethink about the rule. And then actually that will actually force you to kind of have a uh, more precise control, like uh, there's some place you cannot put the geometry and then there is a place you kind of redirect uh, to put more extra. So but anyway, that, that's just, just kind of a uh, thing you can think of about next, like in the future task or whatever uh, practice. And then that we really, uh, and that, that task will enhance your way of thinking at to design and also the, the gonna really push you to uh, have a higher level of skill of coding as well. So just suggestion. So yeah. Thank you, uh, Thank you so much for your suggestion. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Then uh, I'm gonna move on to next one. To uh, next, I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Gosh, can you present to us? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I'll share my screen.
Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Can you explain your project? Like uh, for people who see this for yeah, the first time? So, um, so I named my project as Diverge. Uh, actually, I started my whole uh, project by the thought process of lightning and the branching and the forking uh, when the lightning strikes. Then I shifted it to the uh, branching of visible light, which was a very recent discovery. Uh, so uh, to explain that in a short way, I'll just say that uh, when the researchers were just experimenting with the laser beam, they pointed it on the membrane of the soap bubble and it branched out into the narrow beams that we saw before and which caused on the air around caused it to sway. The next video is basically that. And then um, that is how I connected my form to the concert because uh, the form frankly came out very exper experimentally. And then I started to uh, control the branching and the um, child agents that came out. And then I thought of it as a, at the end, as a pavilion kind of thing for an outdoor space. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, didn't expect you to put these as a pavilion, so, but yeah, that looks great. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, but then the, actually the, the part I uh, like about this project is that, so like, at the end, like, uh, so you, you maintain the uh, kind of sensibility of the lightning or that, that specific type of running is branching. And but at the same time, it's uh, it somehow made out of like uh, squares and more like a crystal. I mean, squares kind of stuck in a uh, kind of crystal formation way. Then, so that, that has very specific uh, geometric style, which also kind of uh, gives uh, that is yeah. kind of secondary, yeah, secondary uh, aesthetic uh, sensibility. The, uh, the primary aesthetic sensibility is given by this uh, branching form. Although that's uh, that's quite uh, geometric as well. It's not like tree. I mean, it's kind of tree shape, but you see the proportion or like a, especially like a, a straight axis is not necessarily uh, nature like. So that kind of somewhere between. Well, actually, it, I I think this is more towards. Uh, uh, geometry world, or you can imagine like uh, this is like an alien nature, something like in some other planet. So uh, that kind of gives you that sci-fi sensibility, which you might be able to find in some uh, past uh, sci-fi uh, movies. But anyway, but when okay, so then maybe my feedback, especially for like a uh, like a, a future consideration uh, topic is that if you imagine this uh, as a pavilion uh, in that specific, I mean, it doesn't need to be that specific scale, but just to think about the building, something like it. Uh, yeah. In that case, you would, you would want to rethink about uh, the modules or like first, is there any, like, a, like rethink about, is there any like a rationality in that geometry? specifically for construction. So for example, okay. um, structurally, I mean, it's kind of the bottom is thin, so it's not that strong a structure, but for example, that square unit, the kind of base unit, that seems to be, I mean, that, that spiral line might be difficult. Well, I mean, first of all, it doesn't need to be just a kind of bunch of line for the, the pavilion building, but just if, for example, if you just use a square panel or some, box as uh, to represent the uh, square unit in the agent simulation. That sounds like, and plus your agent seems to be like having the same size of the square. So maybe you can just bunch, produce a bunch of uh, the square unit. And uh, but uh, of course the aggregation of that would require something else. And then, uh, but 
but that's one example. For uh, another example would be like uh, if you think about the other another type of uh, construction method. Method, for example, if you gonna if you have the uh, square or cubic module as a building block, and if you use a uh, robot construction something. Is there any rationality in this formation, like to fit with the robot construction, or like is there a way to make e make your formation easier for robots to construct, like from bottom to top? I don't know. It, that that part depends. It could be top to bottom in in factory and come back. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, or if you think about uh, modular, uh, like a reconfigurable Sarah. Uh, robots, if like you have like a uh, 10,000 square shape robot and they move each other and they kind of climb up each other and they form this shape, is there a better way for them to do than, I mean, keeping main uh, either formation or kind of a way of thinking or like a, some keep maintaining a concept, but is there any better way you can adjust your logic to that, that kind of thing? Okay. Even mm -hmm. another thing is that if you think about the building uh, this as uh, it might not be different, uh, it might not be the same scale, but if you actually build this as a crystal formation, meaning chemical process, you know some metal uh, can be crystallized in a liquid or liquid metal. Or liquid metal is a bit for example, out of liquid state and they went under certain chemical condition, uh, out of some dust or some other kind of something similar to the formation of a snowflake, they form crystal in a very specific way. And then there is a, a hexagonal uh, forming crystal and there is a defined metal as a square forming crystal. And then like, so each molecule might have a different type, uh, type of formation. And then with certain uh type of molecule can you do something similar but if it does that the molecule would have specific way of formation and in that case you would adjust your way of formation i mean you're gonna change the logic for to simulate that but you would first you would choose certain molecule type of molecule which would resemble uh, this type of geometry and the second but you need to rebuild your forming uh, logic to fit with that chemical system, but you would still adjust like, because those uh, chemical formation is sensitive to like a dust or if there is something to, to be attached, they tends to grow the crystal around it, etc. So like if you could, you could strategically locate those uh, attaching point beforehand inside the chemical bucket, etc. But anyway, so those are kind of um, you can so so what I'm, I mean is that you can think or imagine a systematic construction system in physical world, either like a, so, so regular construction or conventional construction system, robot system or drone system or I mean uh, modular robot system or chemical system or anything. Okay. Then you try to. Uh, align your simulation system with that. So, so actually it's a uh, kind of same uh, comment with the first one we, where I was talking about like, uh, what, what if you want, want to build that thing and you need to think of the structure stuff. So meaning that's kind of constraint. And also that is a factor to make your design more sophisticated when you try to bring, or you try to integrate your system with another system in reality, then now you, it can be buildable and that another system gonna define your design. So but anyway, so that, that's the thing. So, so, so far that it's purely a virtual uh, simulation, but now if you have other constraints, I mean, it doesn't, you can even think about some other system which is not in real. You can think about other pure mathematical system, something uh, in that case, you need to form in a very specific limited kind of numerical sequence, but anyway. So yeah, think about another system and then trying to, uh, to try to make this happen in that system would be the great exercise as computational design or to develop the computational design skills. So that's my comment. So, yeah. But um, that, thank you. yeah, but yeah. this image that we're missing that so that uh, it was great to make this formation in the other pavilion. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then next I 
こなすか。アルバートチェーントゥプレゼント。Can you show way? First, you have microphone program yesterday. Do you think you can、um, do that? If not, w a i t how fast? Let me check some stuff. If Albert is having some, okay, first of all, I see the chat menu. Okay. Okay, you have some problem, so let me. Skip to the next person、uh, until he solves the issue. Okay, next, uh, uh, I w a n t to ask Alan Kim to present. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, let me show my video.、Mm -hmm. Thank you for、Great. watching my video and、uh, let me explain. Um, first, um,、uh, I made a、um, hexagonal pattern for against the deforestation, desertification, and I think、uh, we can,、uh, I can. Um, fix the problem with this、uh, pattern. So the forests are made with a hexagonal pattern and step by step、um, grow, growing trees. And it's like this、um, this diagram. And And then I show a、uh, top, top view、uh, video in this hierarchy plot. And then I, I、uh, skip next to a、uh, perspective view. It's the same hierarchy. And then I show the Rhino file. Which is、um, not, not, like, not polylines and each or surface and meshes. So I think it, it can be admit to VR file.、Mm -hmm. oh, like this. So this is my final files、mm -hmm. uh, video and Ryan file. Yes. Yeah, I like the final formation, and uh,、um, but, but you already you, you also show like a really、uh, precise control, actually, understanding which clock or which level does what, and、uh, uh, that's great. And also, can you show that like a last image, like either rend rendered or like a 3D thing? This one?、Uh, yeah. So, like, 
So, so fa- first, uh, like, uh, uh, having a system of hexagon and then tree or branching pattern inside it is success- successful. And then second, second, or actually higher degree is like, like formation or aggregation of this hexagon, right? And then yes. they are sometimes correlated each other, those, I mean, that, that kind of adaptive um, pattern seems to be interesting. Also, um, not necessarily like why, but, but you know, yeah, it's, it's actually more advanced to have adaptive system than top-down system. So, but that, that can be used for something which I don't know. But, but for aggregation, but after that, like uh, it's just growing out, then uh, keep becoming bigger. So that's one thing that's kind of make it kind of uh, create a singular focal point at center. And then that, uh, visually that somehow kind of uh, resemble certain kind of like leaf pattern in pond, although that was actually part of it. Some, some one of your uh, inspiration as well. So, um, but like, uh, but uh, one thing, uh, one thing like you could do, uh, you can think more is like what's a other more um, richer variation of aggregation. So currently mm-hmm. just going out, keep going out, and yes. then what if, for, for for example, what if you are growing actually. You are not really redesigning forest. You basically, um, first of all, this is just kind of geometric exploration. About yes. as a abstract geometric system, it would be nicer to have a higher level organization, but not not just so. Actually, yeah, first, uh, thinking about organization is one thing, uh, but uh, another thing, okay, so there are two different ways, or well, the two different. Um, direction you can go actually just simply just push one step further so if it's not just simply growing out out or simply uh, scaling up you can have mm-hmm. more kind of uh, variation of density meaning sometimes it gets smaller and then denser and sometimes it go bigger so it doesn't be go necessarily um, kind of singular move or small to be and but that's just another like I said, it's another result of aggregation from this. I mean, singular uh, radial thing is one expression, but uh, the other more kind of uh, diversity de- uh, diversity differentiated, but more uh, uh, spread, equally spread function is another thing, which is kind of more close to nature. But mm. another one, yet another one is that, but that was a kind of more tra- traditional way of uh, approaching to multi-agent system with uh, random number, singular one level use of random number. So, which is uh, so another way which is more interesting in our context of uh, hierarchical agent behavior is that you should have group of hexagon becoming module of something else. So, mm. if, if you define like eight hexagon start to define some certain t shape or l shape or something and somehow that start to grow but if that l shape so in that case if it's l shape that's uh, somewhere in, somewhere near corner of l maybe other uh hexagon cannot come and it will start to create specific void or something it depends but something then then also you could make a higher mod module of like a group of L module uh, in a certain, with certain kind of rotation or something like that. Mm-hmm. Why well, you could even have like a multiple different module, like a module type A, like a, you can think about something like a Tetris game. Mm-hmm. So Tetris game have like a, more, a com- combination of four cubes or square to mm-hmm. make, wait, how many modules there? Like a 10 or less than 10 different module. You could have hexagon one, or like a, you could have 10 or 20 different module made out of hexagon, but they try to grow each other. I mean, when they collide each other, they cannot grow, but they can grow in a certain way. And mm. that is, that will create very specific type of um, uh, aggregation, which might resemble certain like urban aggregation in like a, a 
British uh, Britannism or some, something you see in or like a 60s, 70s uh, London uh, new housing project might have some resemblance to that kind of maybe like a hexagon or some geometric thing to do uh, kind of aggregated, but I mean, repeated for higher capacity to uh, maintain higher population in a kind of uh, um, uh, the housing project, but at the same time, they, they still try, they, 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 they want a 100% universal modern approach. It, was, it has certain kind of diversity there, so your system might create something like that. And, but, but your logic is not necessarily there. So you might, even when you get similar sensibility, you would get something totally different. Which we don't know until you start to experiment and see what happens. But anyway, that's a kind of a suggestion. So like, if you keep adding work, well, so at that moment, you can forget about the branching. I mean, branching is always there somehow, uh, unless they start to uh, block hexagon, which you had the problem earlier, which is, which, which uh, prevent you to grow uh, hexagon. So it was problem, so you stop them. But if you keep make the uh, branch loose, and then sometime the branch overtakes the control of the grow, uh, aggregation. Mm -hmm. Some some place if we totally kill the growth, that that's not good. But if we you can if both can kind of uh, grow each other, that will to create like a interesting formation because it's kind of symbiosis thing. So to think kind of a uh, kind of eating each other or limiting each other, but uh, together they will create some thing you might get some total uh, green area, like a, a natural forest, but you might have other uh, confined hexagonal area. With, but then anyway, so yeah, if you yeah, keep uh, like uh, keep adding the higher module, that would be interesting. So that's my suggestion in terms of kind of pure abstract system. Mm. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, well, yeah, well, another thing I can add is the kind of same thing with other uh, participants. You can think about the uh, application bit. What can you use for architecture or any design in the uh, world? And that will give you constraints you have to solve. Then that will make your agent system stronger. So you can do that too. All right. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, and yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. All right, then I'm gonna move on to next. I think Albert is ready. So yeah, okay, uh, Albert Chen, can you start your presentation? Hey, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Um, uh, please wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, someone, Albert, you are sharing the screen. Something wrong? Mm -hmm. You can you can see it. Wait, I'm seeing Chen. Wait, I okay. Sorry, uh, I uh, confusing. Wait, sorry. Uh, I I mentioned uh, another person, but um, uh, no, not I, Chen I, Yu Chen. <laughs> no, I I I okay. I said Arba Chen. <laughs> Okay, I, okay. Uh, there's uh, two, okay. oh, I, I, sorry. I, sorry, I, too much. Cheng, Cheng yeah. and Cheng, yeah, I, I don't pronounce correctly, but anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, can, can uh, Albert Cheng, can you present? Um, but first, then, Okay, now I'm seeing a report screen.
Yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, out of a screen. And then, so are you still having a microphone problem? Okay, then you you can chat, and then I gonna I can read that, uh, because it's on the YouTube as well. Okay, yeah, go ahead to play the video first. All right, great. And then can you now like explain your project over chat window? Yeah, that's fine to take time to type. Or well, you can show that too. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I kind of can see what people can see the text. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so you are interested in the Gothic uh, board first, right? Column and then, yeah. yeah. You don't need to make it like a really formal text, you can just type in the way you just talk. So the pattern was Repeat and geometric I compounded. Then then start looking like a Gaudi circular the familiar familiar yeah you are talking about the first simulation of yours right
So the 3D version of the simulation, the agents are rotating 3D and they're creating the volume like or okay, surface like structure. You imagine it to be lived pavilion or something. Okay. That's fine. Three species are created, they each have defined parameters. Okay. Okay, so you have three color representing different, I guess, level of parameter, gray and red and cyan. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Sure, great. Then can you uh, show the video again, to, uh, especially the the third part, or any third 3D option, or the last one, the last 3D. That's one thing. So that's a why I like gray and the red and the cyan. Um, oh, cyan comes next in the red to third. Is that the third one? Yeah. So can you stop that at the not uh the third, the last rendered image? Well, if, yeah. Or the I mean video showing the fight the third rendering yeah that one so okay in the beginning in the uh kind of progress uh you started with the uh reference of the the gothic quorum pattern or um bolt uh kind of geometry but uh in the beginning, I thought, yeah, you you might uh, you, you be more kind of um, uh, easier to understand to show like a, a kind of regular repetition with a quorum. But after I mean, after you went 3D, kind of you went uh, further and further and start become something else. It doesn't doesn't necessarily. I mean, first of all, they are not no quorum at all anymore. Although it's a bit uh, more, um, uh, it's still both, but uh yeah from leaves but uh but actually yeah you, it, you yeah as you mentioned it can be it, it become pavilion yes then yes it, it uh it it's um uh, it has original intention at uh, the construction rationality there in a way with the dome shape of the boat but you kind of uh have a new kind of uh you branch off in a bit different direction in terms of like a design language, which is great thing to do. So then you keep pushing, especially like somehow the red ribbon comes out and somehow that red ribbon was originally part of the uh, pattern making of the our quorum pattern or the rib pattern in the board system. But somehow when you keep pushing, it became this, so that somehow dominant. And about that, that way of thinking or that way of kind of uh, pushing, Meaning, like you kind of notice something, and you thought that's interesting to push further to get something else. That's kind of that. That's important. That's important to design something new. So then, yeah. So that's uh that that's great to push in that way. And then, so right now you are thinking about uh the pavilion, which you I mean, thinking uh from the original scale, original intentional scale. Or oh, even this way, so that's that's not that red one is not right. That's a thin surface, which is cool. As well, I mean, somehow this looks like a line drawing, but it's not. So, so that that was a so so yeah. That that three variations look nice because uh, the first the uh, blue part or cyan color, light blue part was dominant, but you somehow that red one uh, was 
the blue one kind of a tame down and then red one comes more and then somehow that create the entry point of the pavilion in a way. So, so that's great. So that vocabulary wise, I kind of balance wise of that system. Uh, yeah, that seems working. So that's good. Uh, the suggestion like to go further from here would be like, um, you can keep pushing. I mean, not in terms of, so currently you have three things mainly, and then uh, you, so the one, one way you pushed here was uh, adjusting the balance and the somehow make the red one more dominant to create a very unique, unique or like a, a strong uh, geometry. Uh, I mean, so expressing um, some strong, strong sense. And then uh, that's one thing. Then, but you can keep pushing uh, to uh, bring like a fourth system coming out of this or fifth or sixth. I mean, it doesn't need to be, um, okay. So, when you bring the, the new level in hierarchy, it can go either small or big usually. So you can start growing something out of the red ribbon, which for example, if you want to build this red ribbon, uh, structure it super thing and it doesn't hold the location. So but, uh, uh, one thing which is uh, di uh, like structure difficult is that uh, they are kind of individually uh, kind of staying in 3D, I mean, as a linear ribbon. But maybe the the force uh, force system, if the branch is out from the red strip, that might connect the lateral connection and then next to it in a uh, like a not a dominant way. Uh, if you keep the but it, it could weave this pattern to make it a, a little bit stronger. Although it's still kind of surface uh, geometry coming out, so it doesn't really necessarily solve the structure. But one thing, so. But that, that's just uh, thinking about bringing new, new system or new hierarchy to solve some of the uh, construction issue. I mean, not solving, but just supporting a little bit. Or you can just uh, keep pushing something else to, um, to uh, expand your design system. So it doesn't need to be about structure or something for construction. And so that, but anyway, so you can bring some, some another hierarchy in a smaller scale, but you could also bring the bigger scale in hierarchy. For example, you could reset some, some agent, like a white one or blue one or light gray one. Somebody can reset their body clock and restart the volt generation from center from somewhere. So in that case, you start to repeat this dome shape or a ball, I mean, triangular volt uh dome shape somewhere based depending on where you start then you're gonna aggregate that so it, it's not sing, a singular triangular pavilion it kind of becomes the aggregation of the other thing and because everything is uh, made out of one agent they can uh, be adaptive not when they collide each other meaning they can easily kind of match up easily without intersection so that wouldn't be like, I mean, you, you can control it to just copy uh, in a clean array system, like copy next to it or flip it. And it, you, you, are, you could build like a triangular grid system that you have like several or many of them, or they kind of uh, mash up in an irregular way, like the first 2D drawing you did. And then that might make something else as well. So, so that's what, uh, uh, my first suggestion. But second suggestion is like uh, same with other uh, participant. You can now, if you really think this as a pavilion, yeah, you need to rethink something uh, how they touch ground, although touching ground part might be great. Yeah, so yeah, rationalization, but not, I'm think I'm talking, actually, of course, if you have this thing uh, as geometry and then maybe you can just think about the rationalization making construction module extra, that's post-rationalization. But you can pre-rationalize it if you can insert the rational logic inside the generation code. Um, but I mean, not, not, I'm not talking mostly, uh, I'm, I'm not just talking about like a, like a repeatable panel extra. I mean, that could be part of it. But although you already have that, uh, but because the module is kind of same, but but 
more about like a structure connection, like a joint, not really joint system, but like you might need more geometry, some location to connect, or you might want, um, or you, you might need to think about the structure, or you might even need to think about the uh, circuit circulation, like some place need to be opened up more, et cetera, or you might want to, either you, are, you might want to close up some of the opening, or you might even want to make one opening out of three bigger and the two smaller or something. In that case, you need slightly different parameter control to adjust the size of opening, I mean, horizontally to come in out the dome shape. So that kind of thing. So thinking about something, uh, well, thinking about, uh, how you could make it building. I mean, it doesn't need to be building. It could be furniture or anything, but, but each of them have a different constraint. You have to solve, you have to think about, you have to design. Then for that, before going to like post-rationalization, you can do, you can make this better by changing the logic. So, I know, still aggregation is something, but so uh, expand the, your de design system with a higher hierarchy, either going small or big is one thing. And then another is think, uh, think about constraints in either real world or whatever application domain, uh, either pavilion, furniture, building, uh, object, even like a jewelry, if you made out, make this out of jewelry, you still have problem. Um, so, yeah, we think about some cons some real uh, production system and then think about the system there and then try to align your system with that, that you make you or your system more advanced. So that's uh, that's my comment. So yeah, but still, yeah, like, uh, yeah I like that you already pushed this far from original inspiration, which is I kind of like, which I, in that direction, I didn't really imagine before Han, so that's great. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, then actually next is uh, Yuji Tang. Can you Hello. present? Hello. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah, so um, I've done up a uh, two short video. Uh, the first one, I just call it uh, organic explorations. Uh, where, so so uh, when I started out doing this uh, final project, I was quite interested in like a uh, shingle and how shingle can uh, actually aggregate and propagate uh, on a 2D plane. So uh, the first the first video will show like uh, something that's a bit more um, organic, where the, the shingle kind of so this is kind of like the shingle uh, logic. It looks kind of like a scale, and then um, after that uh, I tried to propagate it uh, with a sine curve. So um, mainly like the sine curve runs as like a, a clock zero, and then um, you will, will start to propagate this way. And then after that, um, I tried to go a bit more organic by breaking away from the uh, rectangular shape of the shingle. But then uh, because of the lack of shape, um, there is no like termination. So uh, what I tried after that is uh, to find a way to kind of like create some, some form of like termination with a bit more control uh, so that um, I can really uh, aggregate it with a lot more control. Uh, so, so this, in this case, um, it's kind of like sneaking. Uh, sorry, let me go back. In this case, it's kind of like um, sneaking uh, with a sine curve. And then um, you can see uh, like part of it as like modules that, that kind of like repeats itself and flip at uh, different cases, uh, which I really uh, like the, the shape. And then after that, I, I kind of just tried um, branching uh, as a way to propagate off. Um, so this is my first video. So the second one um, I, I, is kind of like a more rigid where uh, 
like before this, the Shingo logic. And then um, after the Shingo logic, I added uh, another clock that does this like panel panelization of the, so, so that it looks like kind of like um, an isometric drawing uh, of like a small like, like corridor or like a, a walkway. And then um, I explored uh, into um, like a uh, branching logic. And then uh, from there, this I, I, I kind of just stacked it. And something that I found uh, a bit more uh, interesting is if you kind of, if, uh, so, so I kind of did the, the math to make sure that it aligns nicely uh, when it branches out. Uh, and the the end result kind of uh, so something that that I tried on the side is kind of to, to just mirror this uh, invertedly, and then the end results start to give you this effect where you know sometimes the roof becomes like um the balustrade, and then uh what's what's meant to be like like the the glass here becomes like um yeah uh glass on on the inverse lah yeah uh. I think if given more, um, if if I would like to explore or like bring this project further in the future, uh, I was thinking to really, uh, I don't know, maybe propagate it in, in, in a lot more like interesting way, uh, as as like maybe like adding some curves and, and, and create more like interesting shapes. Yeah, that's all. Good. Yeah, that that's great. Um. Uh, the part I, I mean, uh, I like is like, my first, you, you really understand the logic and you have precise control of the code like and parameter. I mean, you, you know how to make it like, uh, 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 like the snake shape, like you know, you know how you, you can keep the direction, you you this uh, some uh, precise branching extra. And then even when you make this, uh, Oh, uh, oh yeah, so that those, and then then the, even like uh, the branching after this is really balanced nicely. So you have a nice kind of void space, and then um, yeah, almost looking like a courtyard. I mean, I can imagine those are roof scape of some building. But by anyway, so the the whole aggregation has a nice balance, meaning you have a, a, a Good uh, sensibility and a good, good eye to uh, adjust to make it a uh, good balance. And so, yeah, first, yeah, I, I like this pattern a lot, but also, yeah, I like the next expression view as having the straight variation as well. Especially you, you intentionally brought the next uh, hierarchical behavior of uh, uh, straight. Uh, parallelogram shape, which makes it look like a grading or wall. So yeah, now you look like a, a wall on the roof. So then you kind of play with that, that, that way you kind of play with it really nice. And then, yeah, especially you control exactly to match the edge is nice. And then you flip that, that up, up, up and down, it kind of make it an original. So I think, uh, I mean, yeah, each of them have a really good quality. And then this, especially this one, uh, like I'm curious to what what gonna, what gonna happen if you pass through this meaning. You now when you flip up, up and down. So first of all, you are generating two D patterns. They look three D or asymmetric, but you that's two D, and that's why when you flip upside down, that become a bit original. A regional in a way like an MC Asia type of uh, real condition. And mm -hmm. if you keep pushing, you you can do more complex and then tricky and then illusion of the interesting thing, which will be which might be very inspiring. So in in, in the context of architecture culture. So I kind of uh, recommend you to keep work on this and then make super huge drawing as just a visual kind of a uh, Drawing, architecture, not the architecture drawing, but like a mm -hmm. visual drawing, like a wall drawing, the huge drawing, then with the tons of complexity, and then which look like a like uh, urban, like axon drawing or something, but like mm -hmm. some some like a view is or three dimensionality is all messed up because of the 
is upside down or weird intersection or something which you you I cannot or people I cannot really see as a um, three pure three dimensional representation which uh, this is you know so yeah that would be super interesting and that's all kind of automatically generated and so you can yeah kind of uh, generate tons of different things out of it so yeah so by by it this itself not as like designing three-dimensional architecture but just a bit uh, like a representation of uh, illusional 3d and that that would be interesting and then you would get inspiration of shape of 3d building out of your illusional 2d drawing as well so and then uh, yeah i'm uh, really curious about that i mean you don't you don't need to pursue only the original part even when even with like a regular um regular axometer even if you don't flip it if you just keep uh exploring like how to branch and then how to like aggregate and then you can uh, with your ability to control i think you can you can make a bigger block as well like you so right now you have this v shape kind of module well it's actually a starting point but um you can have another kind of you can reorganize some of them as one uh, module and then you repeat in a different way and then you might get like so for example you can imagine this is some uh, urban grid in in asia somewhere in ancient time <laughs> But yeah. in that case, you might you might think about a city block where block stops and then block become higher module, and then mm. you might repeat that somehow. So you, you give gap. So there's another but, hierarchy in like the the yeah, that, block yes, or like the yes. cluster aggregation. Yeah, mm. yeah. Then you might do something else in a royal palace or something. I don't know. But um, but you can keep imagining that you can keep building up the module. And you can even get like if, if you build the module, okay, so module creates a city, and if you finish the city, and then maybe you can repeat the city in a kind of neighbor or adjacent place, or like a, this is the old imperial palace, this is a new, new kind of new district, old you know, district, how they call each other. But anyway, um, you can keep imagining the higher hierarchy. That's one thing. But you can also play with that, that kind of uh, illusion part as well. And then mm. uh, yeah, so I can imagine you you can easily generate like two meter by ten meters huge complex urban drawing out of this. Um, at that at that point, I'm sure the processing gonna crash. But anyway, um, <laughs> so but yeah, this has a potential. Well, I'm just personally curious about what gonna happen if you keep doing. I mean, of course, still like uh, still like the first part of the more organic growth. Yeah, you, you, uh, that has an interesting question as well. But uh, this, uh, this one, I, uh, to me, it's more kind of uh, in a way subdued and then, then restrained, but has different shows that, uh, well, it really let you focus on, or, not, really, not necessarily organization, but, but first, let, this let you focus on the organization and hierarchical part. And also, also this, actually, I know that this has just strong, uh, effect of a fake uh, illusional 3D thing. So it is quite inspire inspiring for us. So yeah, yeah, I hope you keep doing this. I mean, maybe several steps and then, then maybe you can start thinking about actual 3D mm -hmm. design. But before that, you can keep doing in 2D world, you know, like a, as a medium 2D drawing or architecture drawing was the main tool, not as to build three-dimensional thing architects imagine but it was also itself designed to to give feedback to architects how to rethink really about design so mm -hmm. this could become that although you are writing code but your code generated drawing gonna inspire you to do something more unimaginable which will be amazing so yeah okay that'd be great thank you Thank you so much for your comments. All right. Thank you very much for the work. Uh, great. And mm -hmm. okay, next.
uh, next uh, using link can you hello yeah yeah screen hello uh, can you hear me okay Uh, can you see it? Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to play it. Okay, let's all um, introduce it briefly. Uh, my, sorry. my reference is this kind of cabbage section and uh, it, it comes from the center and it has this kind of spiral shape and it, it, uh, each, each branch has its uh, more sub branch so I think this kind of shape is very interesting. And uh, this is the procedure work. I analyzed how it generates. So I make several try. Uh, this is like a kind of flower kind of shape. And uh, this is another one, uh, a little bit chaotic. And the, the final, the final, I tried uh, it in a three-dimensional way. And because the cabbage shape has this kind of circle, so I create this kind of shape, curve shape at each side. And uh, I rotate it in different directions. And the final shapes like this is a little bit like the wave or the water. That's all. Good. Okay, so, um, yeah. You kind of achieve that uh, cabbage uh, shape in a, in a way. But um, uh, one question is that when you went 3D, I believe you start using like a three-dimensional rotation. Uh, did you have any difficulty to come back as a spiral? Did he like, this spiral seems to be like coming back as in a plane, a same plane, although it's diagonal. Did he like uh, in the beginning go far as like a spiral going up or down? Uh, I also try the going upside down way, but uh, the more most thing I want to is um, if there is any interaction with each other, but I tried and failed. I don't know how to how to make each uh, different branch contact with each other. Right. So, so I'm not actually not talking about the branch, but like organization, like because when usually start doing three-dimensional um, angle change. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to come back, come back as circle. Sometimes it just goes as uh, spiraling, spiraling up or spiraling down and go somewhere. So if you kind of adjust it to have the uh, kind of uh, planar formation or like coming back as a uh, circular spiral uh, in a close kind of uh, proximity, that's, that's good control. And then uh, one more thing, yeah, then, yeah, actually, yeah, that's, uh, that's good control to achieve that, uh, that, that dot shape or eye shape 
to create something uh, resembling the cabbage uh, leaf core. So yeah, I think that's a uh, nice plus. Somehow, uh, yeah, those eye shape or core shape is really aligned in the spider. So I mean, I think that came from the regular kind of a modular move. But um, but yeah, that's good. And then maybe I would suggest, uh, yeah, first I was talking about like earlier in the feedback, I was talking about bringing another model or another hierarchy or another behavior, like maybe branching something. Then they, I understand yes, this, if you branch out, they will collide into the uh, outer spiral coming and they will stop that uh, the spiral, that might not be good. So in that case, in that case, you, yeah, you might, if it's branching, you, you branch might happen inward, but in, if it goes inward, you just hit the one in a level of spiral, so that might not do something. So it, it could go like up or down to grow something else. Or you could even imagine like from here, because we are treating this as the design system, not uh, the cabbage anymore at some point. So um, if you reset whole clock and they grow something in uh, upper direction, like the up direction, it will create like arc shape in a defined way about something. Or, but anyway, so, but anyway, so they, yeah, the thinking about some thing uh, uh, like a defined module and to uh, chain to either to think about another like aggregation of spiral. So currently it's a single, single spiral made out of uh, this uh, several module, uh, which has that certain differentiation like cabbage. Uh, but you can, if you have another mo uh, kind of hi hierarchical level, you could think about how to repeat this. Like for example, um, if you think about one, one, one example is if you think about not uh, only one section of cabbage, but if you imagine like some imaginary virtual section of cabbage, uh, if you like cut cabbage in every five millimeter or something, you have another spiral underneath, right? Uh, and yeah. that's gonna, yeah, that gonna get smaller and smaller and then that gonna go to the bottom of cabbage. So you could do that. Like you can have layer of this spiral. So they are all line, but uh, it, it can start forming like a volumetric quality with that. But in that case, you have to think about how, uh, actually it, it would be more natural to think about the bottom first. Bottom core is just solid and it doesn't have much, uh, or plus it's small radius. And if it, when it grows uh, upwards, it's gonna create larger spiral. And so, so the next, so the higher level is like, this layering, layer of spiral gonna be the another aggregation uh, uh, logic adding to, added to this logic. So that's one thing you can think about. Okay. And yeah, then another thing is that actually if you really think further in the original example, not image, but actual cabbage, the way it grow is not like from center rotating around, right? Meaning, uh, if you actually yeah. think the like a botanical growth, the first like bud of cabbage would be several leaves somehow. I mean, three dimensional, small three dimensional leaves and small uh, spherical shape, but would be the beginning. Although I'm not sure that's true, but it grows, but grows from small small sphere to grow bigger spherical cabbage by mm -hmm. adding adding the new leaves somewhere. I I believe new leaves are added inside because the center keeps the growing uh, growing kind of bud shape. <laughs> yeah, new new leaves comes from the center, and the center <laughs> keep pushing the other leaf out, and then the reason why this look like spiral is because the central uh, leaf creation system is somehow rotating, like a 
like new leaves are added not in the same angle, but slightly rotated, possibly because that they didn't have space if they put in the same place, they are kind of crowded. So uh, then they keep pushing and the outer leaf grows out more, right? They, they the first, I think the far, very first leaf, leaf of cabbage would be the most outside leaf, the biggest one. It was the, the only child in the beginning or child leaf in the beginning. It keep growing up uh, or it keep becoming bigger and bigger because the inside is kind of push, not only pushing, but the inside pushing, but also outer leaves keep growing as one leaf as well. So, so that's the actual process. Then if we want to simulate that, that's, I mean, first of all, it's super difficult. But second, uh, so this level, I haven't really developed the, the level of uh, algorithm yet with hierarchy, but I kind of was conceptually did with a cell growth system. Um, in, so yesterday I was uh, uh, giving feedback uh, on a participant about like, if you want to think about like a, uh, autonomous active system versus a responding system. Uh, like I'm also talking about like this a static agent system because our agent system doesn't move. Once you draw a line, they stay in the same location, they never move. But there's mm -hmm. the other agent system, which is like a swarm and the particle and the force based system, which can keep moving. So this agent, this agent cannot be pushed to go out, but there's a way to integrate them and they, which happened in the, um, some of the, I mean, tutor, some of the tutorial examples show the integration of the branching agent and a uh, particle system, which can, which you can apply force. And then the extension or, or what the, uh, further development of that logic is a, a cell growth system, which is also uh, the cell or biological analogy of cell node is keep branching and they keep making geometry, but they, they maintain the geometry, but they can move as well but by application forces and then they, yeah, they, they can push each other and they grow and the branch and stuff. So our hierarchy system could do that as well if you integrate or if I, or we integrate with, uh, in the same way with that happens. So that level you can start thinking about the actual uh, the cabbage leaf growing system starting from the bottom with uh, several leaves and then keep adding internal leaf so in that case, you have like a severely defined module or hierarchy system of uh, maybe first of all, upper, upper level kind of system is a generation of new small leaf, right? It comes in the mm -hmm. center. But the inside that logic, which is actually lower hierarchy, is the growth system of one leaf. One leaf wants to become bigger. You want the edge out, want to grow outside, but the center core becomes thicker. And then the more, um, leaf or plant being developed so that network is more developed somehow. Uh, I don't know about that mechanism uh, where, uh, very well, but, but so there'll be several logic or hierarchy inside one leaf and then, but the leaf generation system is something else. And then the another system would be like how they push each other, not only the system, but some behavior, how they like, push, well, Leaf general system rotating itself is one thing and how they define the ro rotation, etc. But anyway, so that more kind of advanced way of, uh, or first of all, advanced algorithm, but by, uh, by being inspired by your uh, uh, reference source of cabbage, you can think further in that way. And so that, that level I, I just mentioned, that mechanism or like a, uh, integration of the passive the active uh, passive force system and the active uh, uh, gen geometry or agent de generation system is more advanced, but the inspiration or pursuit of the mechanism of cabbage would uh, push you to go there. Well, I might do that later, but so, so yeah, so meaning, so, so that, that has potential and that has potential to push you further and then you can you don't need to that go that far, but you can still think about uh, what's the difference between these two cabinets, not just a, a kind of a appearance level, but like a logical level, something. So 
But anyway, that's a bit abstract a comment uh, to give you. Um, then of course, if you uh, if you think about like uh, you just take this as design system or start, you you could just reset, reuse this as starting point of your design system, and then mm -hmm. you can build something like that. So right right now it's uh, so so now I'm kind of giving you simpler feedback, which is you could use. So right now this is a sp uh, spiral formation system, and then you can switch to. Uh, your branching, or even you, I, I think you can make everything straight. You can just keep make everything straight, which might have some applicability for. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why you want to use this for, but yeah, you can think about if you want to make making using this you as a building a bit uh, soon. Uh, but um, not really jewelry, but but something else. But the first, yeah, the bit of uh, I think you would want several more uh, hierarchy to make more kind of applicability to different things and then mm -hmm. or you i mean one thing you can uh, kind of uh, uh, in a in a short sighted way to apply this would be like a, some you, you could make a circular roof out of this as a pavilion extra in that case this eye shape or round shape would be one panel of roof extra but even that level you want to first you want to adjust the formation to make it more like a concave or convex roof shape extra and you might be want to rethink about the panel uh, interval for adjust or like something or even like a solar shading mesh thing uh anyway so something something you can imagine and then yeah then you can re-adjust your system so that okay that's the same i'm i'm, I'm giving exact same feedback to everybody but that kind of good way of thinking to push you further and to make your script more sophisticated so yeah that's my feedback okay thank you for your comments all right thank you very much okay then let me see uh who's next it was missing so okay uh, next, uh, Cheng Yu Cheng. Uh, now, uh, your turn. Yes, sir, I'm here. Yep. Please start your screen share. Okay. Uh, Uh, it has some background music. I don't know if you can hear it. Just um, play it. Okay, that's all. All right. Um, maybe I'd like to explain my uh, design. Uh, mm -hmm. I referenced to the Chinese traditional pattern on the windows, on the handrails, on this uh, little uh, wooden um, structures. Um, uh, I think they are they are struggling. Note, they are struck. Their their structure is really interesting, and I I think if I could use this uh, code to make it uh, endless, to grow infinitely. Um, I, dis uh, I just discovered uh, there are some kind of patterns on this uh, wooden structure, like squares, um, uh, rectangles, 
and also the rolling squares, how to say, um, I, mm, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just some kind of a Chinese traditional patterns um, on the windows. And so I made these animations. Um, I mean, this, um, this rolling uh, after the instruction from uh, Satoru Sensei, uh, I may try to make these things to, uh, I made some, Mm, I tried some some kind of, uh, but but mm, it's not it's not good it's not as good as the the code that it, um, from from Sato Sensei. So I I keep this. Mm. And it becomes uh, very generatively and it can grow a little grow infinitively um, yeah that's all <laughs> okay i mean this um this this space is left uh left empty and also this uh, little square um they, they become a little bit just um, a kind of pattern a kind of interesting pattern yeah Really, yeah, it's really like the old Chinese tradition pattern. Yeah, I like the pattern, and then the the interesting thing is that you started with that um, uh, Chinese pattern you see on the wall or screen, and then somehow when you put this on the square plane, and when when you introduce that that cubic three D shape, somehow mm. now that look like a building or house, and then now it's quite kind of oh, whole yes. thing start yes. looking like the, the like a, yeah like the Chinese water city or village. You know, like a yeah. the water. Yeah, so I don't this know picture the, I, yeah. is really like the old traditional Beijing city. The forbidden yeah. city is really is really similar. Yeah. Mm, I, I wonder if cool. there is a I wonder if there is a kind of connection in the logic of those uh, houses in in tradition. I mean, in history, and the uh, pattern is somehow like a way of designing similar. Well, I don't know that one, but uh, but anyway. Uh, so that that, that part of kind of uh, yeah, that three dimensional uh, expression, three dimensionality is seems to be interesting. And then, yeah, thank then, you, sir. I forgot. Yeah. Then the even even like um, especially if it's Okay, in either case it's screen or the the water city, uh, that void is important as well because that's where you, you would put the water or for screen you, you put uh, light through. So then in this case, first of all, yeah, those geometry the lines, so of course they are transparent, but you get specific shape of void as well. And mm. then that is uh, actually, but that's just a natural result of it's almost like a fractal logic of like an agent branching collide each other in a specific location. So, uh, but but still that creates certain organization that's great and that's a result of a um, branching logic. I mean, specific uh, hierarchical branching logic. Mm. So, so yeah, so that's, uh, but so the, the quality I like in this uh, project is, yeah, those, those parts like uh, the, the, that implies those kind of design on void, design of a kind of city, not city, but like a house organization, like uh, those are kind of bridging parts, or, or even, mm. I mean, you can still see, think this as um, screen pattern, if you put it on the wall, or if you somehow 3D print, actually, production part that you know what, but if you make this as a kind of small scale, it's one door or one window or something, and then not sure what that this uh, three dimensional uh, sticking out part become. Uh, maybe you could put uh, like a candle or uh, like an instance or something, but uh, but still interesting. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. So maybe just so from here, I'm sure, I mean, uh, like a visually still uh, interesting, then they're like, maybe, you, um, so right now you have, you kind of have no control on the void shape because you don't know why it's like, I don't know why it's like. Um, I don't too. I don't either. <laughs> yeah, but you can think about that. Why, what you can think about how you can control the void shape and then 
that that's super difficult thing to do. But I mean, you can think about, and then but that also uh, you think the bigger organization how it is growing. Uh, in a plan view, can you show the plan view growth and when it's big mm. in the animation? Um, can you can you change? I I, I didn't get you. You oh, mean can can uh the different view? You have the animation seeing from the top. Oh. From the top. Yeah, so when it grow further, it, so this shows the fractal relationship uh, very well. So somehow this grows from the corner of the square. And yes. then, but anyway, so you can kind of play with like a mean play with the logic meaning of you can change the location or timing to branch out and um or even the probability or like a random probability might make it, I mean, that will totally make it everything things different, but um, oh. so you, first you can, you can play with the, one, uh, the uh, whole aggregation. And then oh, that's one thing. And then another thing which might be more interesting other design problem is what do you want to make out of this? I mean, what design do you apply? So, Hmm. Like you, if you actually start thinking about applying this as urban development by aggregation, you need to, you would need control of a more exact uh, walking path and the structure to go ground or uh, etc. That kind of thing. And what that kind of rectangular and uh, not square, if square part is a building, what's that rectangular thing and how do you use that? Or you might want something, some different um, pattern comes, not pattern. Some, some other module, you might want some other module which represent, for example, guardrail or bridge or something else for you want to make a, a city wall somewhere, or if you want to make a, a, a urban light fixtures in the case you want to put for, or that doesn't fit with the traditional sense, but, uh, but something else. That's mm. one design level. Uh, mm. So adding more, thinking more design uh, element is something uh, interesting to think about and you can include that uh, or integrate that uh, into your code, but more serious uh, design solution problem is if you want, so, so that stru thinking structure or walking path, or even if it, this is super rapid thing and then I think there is a location you cannot walk if you imagine the line as a uh, walk path. So you might want to think about that, like how how those three are attached to next vision. But anyway, yeah. that's just I'm just talking about the constraint. And again, this is the same same feedback to everybody else, and which is you think about some uh, design application to something, and that something else give you the constraint, and you want to refine your design to solve that constraint. So thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah with, with that, which could be other thing, or which could be wall screen or window screen or which could be i don't know some i i don't know yeah. how this yeah. become one building uh, somehow uh, okay. if you if you start like a bending the base walking path like thing 90 degree to make hmm. bigger plane maybe you could design one building out of this like this become one surface or building. but anyway but those hmm. things so think about think about design application and okay, then yeah. bring certain condition or certain constraint you have to solve in the code level. And then do that. Or even, even one step before that, just to make it look more either building or urban scape, you can just put, start putting surface to mm, this. Yeah. Currently, yeah. you only have lines. So when you put surface, you might start noting problem. Some surface look just too weird to exist. Yeah, too a real far of, from in, a, maybe, in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, collision is one thing, but just uh, even design-wise, or even, yeah, structure-wise, design-wise, collision-wise, et cetera, if you start to, if you just simply put in surface, already give you problem, and then you might want to solve that problem, problem by your design, so yeah. that's good exercise. So, yeah, actually, yeah, that would be yeah. one You put the surface you. and then make it look good, so. so yeah, because you, when currently line looks better, making uh, adding surface and make it look better would be already a challenge so yeah that would be nice challenge to do mm. first but anyway 
yeah. Uh, if you actually yeah. do that, let me know. I want to see. So, um, okay. Thank you. Sir. Right. Thank you for your instruction. I think the next is the uh, person of the presentation. Uh, uh, Katie Mani, can you present yours? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Just sharing my screen. Yes, please. Can you see it? Uh, not see yet. Well, I don't see it. Oh, it yeah, now it's starting. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, I actually couldn't put up a video because it was not rendering. So I have a few slides and I've recorded the animation on processing. Okay. So to begin with, uh, my topic is digital organisms and living machines. And uh, I wanted to take up a bottoms up approach and majorly focus on exploring human or machine uh, aesthetics instead of uh, taking inspiration from a direct organic kind of a form which exists in nature. And uh, for the topic of this workshop, which is geometric order and hierarchy, I was um, inspired by the works of Ernst Haeckel, who is a German uh, uh, marine biologist and zoologist. So uh, in his works, uh, there was always a distinct uh, order and hierarchy and very interesting patterns that would uh, be formed. And then he would make some really good drawings and illustrations. So I was inspired by those. and. Uh, as I already told, I wanted to explore because we are in a post Anthropocene world. Uh, so I was more interested in exploring human or machine uh, expressions. And so when I was uh, uh, learning about the clock stack algorithm, I did a few initial studies. And uh, what I noticed was that uh, the agents which have a very sharp uh, 90 degree related uh, turns, they were appearing to be more machine-like like this one here. And the others were tending to look more organic uh, in form. So I went ahead with this iteration here and uh, further explored more on it. So. Uh, I found this to be really uh, interesting because the distinct hierarchy of all the shapes is sort of visible. And also, the this could be sort of deduced as maybe the limbs of this organism that is uh, growing, uh, growing along with the form. So then I did a few more uh variations and developed a few more species and i i like to play the animation uh, so this one is in from the top and this is a 3d view and this is from the side so even in elevation there's a lot of variation and uh, complexity happening. As you can see, various layers getting formed on top of each other. And this was the white dots are the structural sort of support system. And this is imagined to be on a very uh, smaller cellular or uh, level scale. So. Uh, I, I could see some really interesting hierarchy uh, happening. So I'll stop this here. And going back to the presentation. 
these were some more species that I was experimenting with. Some of them had these tapered uh, funnel-like structures as a modular unit and then branching out to form more uh, organic like growth patterns. And then I got uh, curious that uh, can this be applied across a larger scale, like a building or an urban scale? Will this, will these aggregations sort of uh, work? So the first thing that I thought of as a support system was for the structure. So uh, then I wrote this uh, code uh, which follows the same uh, uh, pattern, but at the same time is also growing uh, in the Z axis. And you can see there's a lot of hierarchy and interweaving uh, ha happening here, which I found to be really interesting. This is a, uh, this was a, a screenshot of taken midway during the simulation, but I wanted to just show that uh, these are actually like ribbed, uh, like say how we are, like our uh, um, vertebral column. So sort of like that, but on this urban scale, it also looks like maybe steps or, or stairs. So uh, like a interesting labyrinth of stairs going down uh, below like that and going up again in some places. So. This was uh, something which I found to be really interesting. I also have a video for that. So this is what we see from the front view and this is in 3D and this is the entire uh, uh, system integrated with the skeletal system. Yeah, so that's about it. Right. Okay. So yeah, that those are uh, interesting. And then, so I, I see the stair is still growing down, and yeah, looking very labyrinth thing. And yeah, actually, yeah, I, I like like the development. And so in the beginning, it was two D, and then plus uh. You have a bunch of a square shape module, but now when it becomes 3D, yeah, thinking that other kind of work, uh, circulation and um, stairs, that's that's a, yeah one nice step to take. And then, but that like um, level, um, well, can you go back to like a one or two slide before this? You had uh, like a two image showing, oh my, this one, so. Uh, you might not have the actual steps, but uh, the whole organization is there, like a 3D organization. So that that the depths going down somehow gave you another level of hierarchy, which is nice. Yes. And then, yeah, if we, if we, this is like, uh, I mean, what first are you imagining as a, a urban scales? Thing, and then, then you translate the other kind of circulation path and then maybe stairs. In that case, this is like an insanely larger version of a stair uh, pavilion, like a, like just complex version of like a New York uh, uh, Heatherwick Vestel type of situation. Yes. Right? Yeah, yes. But, but of course that's a, I mean, first of all, yeah, you can create it, but still, but anyway, that's one thing, way to think about this. But even without thinking about actual application, the geometric or like hierarchical uh, system already or hierarchy, this already shows a uh, good level of hierarchy. And then even the like uh, peripheral part of like a smaller branches, uh, uh, like I'm not sure how they could they are connected, but still like uh, that that shows a uh, different uh, behavior. And I don't yeah. think 
the the peripheral the purple lines are different behavior right is it or is the same square behavior or that another clock is running there to do different thing the purple it is uh, the responding to the time of simulation so oh yeah what, you change okay yeah. whatever in purple has happened towards the ending right but so, uh, what how about the outside outside the purple one not not the bottom of a square but the outside of the whole big circular uh spread is that yeah that part is that different does it have like a different turning angle is that not really square anymore why is that square is that smaller um, square some of them are squares just like how in the center some of them are squares yeah. and the uh, others are uh, at screwed across okay so all right okay. it's a similar thing yeah. just that they're diminishing in size and moving okay. in z axis right in that case the scale so the scale became like smaller and smaller and at some point that doesn't uh, resemble like the original one or like somehow when it became smaller that they connect to the neighbor in a tighter distance and they they, they start to have different relationship to neighbor or like a different aggregation, I mean, denser aggregation. Uh, but that part is kind of continuous gradual thing. Um, then yeah, that, that, that one, yeah. Intentional, that one. But intentional because I wanted to give the organism a right. definition so that it stopped somewhere. Right. So it functions like an individual uh, Yeah. Unit. Actually, yeah, in, in that in, is that intention it is successful because I mean for for organic sensibility, this uh continuous scale down. So so like a logic or well, high level of hierarchy is kind of same in the from center to peripheral part. Although it's just the gradually getting smaller and then they kind of connect tighter and then uh, certain turning uh, angle create a bit of uh, diversity and then they kind of uh, uh, aggregate together becoming kind of more continuous um, formation around it. Yes. Yeah. But uh, one thing, uh, so in a way like a central part it represents more machine aesthetics and the peripheral part represents, well, aggregation, but the peripheral part represents uh, uh, more organic or biological uh, sensibility. Uh, the, if, yeah, if that is the uh, intention that's successful. So uh, what I would suggest to take a further step would be to create a, a separation in, in the way of control, meaning, so currently one hierarchy system, like a square spiral aggregated in a specific uh, turning angle mm -hmm. is just changing the size and then some change, continuous change of size create a one extent. So it's kind of continuous uh, change. It's not so center to the peripheral is not the uh, hierarchical shift, but you could do that if you switch the uh, logic and uh, not, not if condition, but like you, if you have um, like use a defined clock, defined hierarchy, I mean, you don't need to suddenly switch you can keep this a uh, uh, gradual change, but you could insert something new to it, which uh, kind of uh, create a, a bit of diversity. Like, so kind of as a whole aggregation, you can see one continuous uh, mound shape with differentiated density. And the mm. center closer to more more uh, square, and then around it, it's uh, still square, but more kind of fuzzy thing. But you could uh, introduce a bit more alien element. Or, for example, what if that huge square in the middle? Yes. Suddenly happen outside, or not outside, but peripheral. That become a bit. That, that would look like some kind of bigger chunk of a crystal inserted in, in the middle, right? Yeah. So, yes. so that, that kind of a mixture can be achieved with uh, another level of hierarchy. So for, for, as pure design system, I would suggest that. And yes. then, um, so that's one thing. And then, but yeah, 
but as one package, well, as one package to have some kind of uh, you, your initial intention of like a, a, a balance of a, a machine uh, like aesthetics and the organic aesthetics, some come integrate together. Uh, yes, this did uh, uh, achieved. Um, then, but just to pursue like our aesthetical interest further, yeah, more hierarchical order, like hierarchical, hierarchical mm -hmm. order to uh, articulate certain diversity, certain type of diversity, uh, mm -hmm. would be something to push further to pursue that, that type of aesthetics. That's one thing. Then yeah. the another thing is, uh, again, same with uh, all other participants, but I think about application, although you did think about application, about like urban, uh, urban stairscape. And then, yeah, I'm very curious what happens if you actually grow whole thing to the ground and then now each square reaches to the ground as a stair. So of course, structurally, you need to think about something else, but uh, a circulation, that's like a huge labyrinth. And then, um, then yeah, that would be the first of it. If, if actually you, you could think about something else in a in a bigger scale or smaller scale, uh, I don't know if this can become one building. Um, possibly this can easily be this can be seen easily as a roof or building. But by anyway, so that's another scale. You can mm -hmm. think this as certain furniture. I don't know what that is, but in that case, you would think something else. And then, but anyway. Uh, so you, you can choose some, so right now, if you still think about this urban scale, you can think, start thinking about like a, a structure, et cetera, and then that will give you more um, uh, thoughts on design. Yes, for example, you, you have this uh, white column geometry, is that column? By anyway, column geometry. If that is a structure, you need to put in a more, more, more structure way. I mean, currently it doesn't hold the whole thing, so yeah. that's it. Did you, did you actually think about, did you think about placing this uh, to become a structure of this uh, square spiral? Um, so this uh, structure that is currently there for the system actually passes through the bottom of the uh, extrusion. Yeah. And also I was thinking that this image particularly also looks like it could be a uh, a jewelry piece, maybe. Yeah, yeah that, you can do that too. I mean, the peripheral part looks like a bit of a coral. But anyway, but anyway, uh, yeah. For example, yeah. But going back, like, if you want to uh, think about the structure more, uh, or, uh, if it's yeah. jewelry, you. One thing I didn't uh, point out earlier was that. Uh, just a moment. So the way the skeleton grows, uh, it stops after a while, as you can see, which uh, I was thinking is when it hits the ground, but the organism still continues to grow with, uh, with the extrusions and the column-like members underground. So it's, uh, it's, it's supposed to be coral, okay. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So I'm yeah. So that. So, but anyway, yeah. That that's great. That you sort of structure somehow. So that's so that that so that way of thinking. That way of thinking. Just thinking more about how can you make it more realistic. No, I mean, not not really realistic, but like oh. making more a bit rational. Yeah. Yeah. Irrational and imaginable as a uh, that that pavilion. Uh, stair pavilion. So, yeah. And then, then actually, one thing, one more specific thing I would suggest to think about would be like, what if what if you actually want to propose this in a competition of pavilion in a park? Mm -hmm. What scale do you change? Well, because well, first you would need to limit, and you it's, that that is your limitation. But you don't want to lose the quality of design or certain level of complexity. For sure, you would have one big spiral stair, well, spiral stair, but mm -hmm. then you might want several more, and then you might so you might not have hundred square uh, spiral stairs. You might have maybe less than ten, but in that case, you would rethink 
about turning angle of those because you want to capture nice diversity of your system. And yes. you would think about more serious about structure. And you would also need to think about uh, guardrail. Your, gener your agent could generate the guardrail as well in the same logic or something similar logic. You mm. might want to think about the viewing platform. You might want to think about like a direction or solar direction, which orientation you take, etc. And the, that could be included in the logic of agent. You might yeah. need to adjust the specific entrance location, park would require, etc. So there's a tons of things you can think about. Then yes. you can rethink your code. Uh, so that would be interesting thing to think about. So, but anyway, yeah, that, that's one example. One example, just try to think more uh, realistic or imaginable scenario and then what you then find the design problem and mm -hmm. then solve that problem you are, with your script. That is, a, that is a good exercise. So, uh, but yeah, that's a suggestion. Yes. One more thing which I wanted to explore but there wasn't enough time was uh, the branching systems on the tutorial page mm -hmm. and uh, some complex network uh, systems which could also work like uh, an analogy right. to the roots and yeah. all of that. Yeah. But network actually, so yeah, I, I want to talk briefly about network, or network theory in complex system science. So that is a, that is a kind of a, a, a scientific finding uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the observation of nature about the network of, actually it's mostly about uh, abstract network of like a relationship between one creature being prey of other creature then constantly eaten or like a social network issue or like a, uh, or even like, uh, I mean, first human social network issue, network connection issue, meaning who knows who and how many, who knows how many people and then who knows who. And then also the growth of network in, growth of network in uh, internet connection. Like in the beginning, it was an uh, experiment in university, but later, yeah, everywhere. But yes. how it uh, grew in the, in how uh, in what way? So the finding of of the uh, scientific finding of that is that the equal network doesn't grow equally. It's not all equal connection, and then some of them strong or some has some has bigger connection. And um, some people know more people, and some people has less number of people. But the people who know more people tends to get to know more people later. So it's kind of winner gets all kind of thing, but that also is known to function super well as uh, connection uh, for network to work, meaning uh, because of that, of that, we have like a six degree of separation. Like if you know somebody who seems to know many people and it, you yes. can connect to in, anybody in the world or well, theoretically, most likely anybody in the world when you trace uh, you are con like a so, uh, connection tracing like a human like a who knows who connection yeah. and then mm -hmm. the key to do that is you just always try to find the person who seems to know more people usually famous people so if you uh, like if you try to hmm, be somebody in the other side of the world first you try to get to somebody who knows the part who knows the most people who would be like a, a professor or some CEO of the company or like a, a dean of the university and that dean might know the mayor, mayor knows the president, president knows the other country in the president, that person, but it didn't go down. So that because that's because the stronger node or winner or the popular people works as mm -hmm. a hub. Then going back to the engine system. So that's something about who is strong, like a power, not really power, but who influence who or who controls who. For example, your staircase is blocking a lot of other branches in a way. Meaning if you build, so you are thinking, so the network example in my tutorial page is kind of 
using a particular system and then kind of connection system, just simulating yes. that network growth. But yes. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't need to use that to simulate that network behavior. That can be done by this agent when you control that power relationship, like who grew who. So right now, right now, this the growth is kind of equal. Everybody is instructed to generate child agent, but yes. if you have change the logic of the agent who has more not really connection, but like who agent who has more who generate more children can generate more children, etc. If you that um, introduce the logic, that might happen here as well. So then that's something called a preferen preferential selection or preferential growth. But anyway, so yeah. So meaning, so, uh, by, I was, by, yeah. Uh, I was interested in uh, selecting a few of these, uh, uh, like modules, and yeah. with the probability function, sort of uh, growing its own network, uh, mm -hmm. because the idea was to add more, uh, like augment this machine with more machine parts which have their own intelligence. Because when I tried to just put in geometry from Rhino, they were all just the same geometry getting placed on it. But mm -hmm. if even those uh, augmentations had to branch out like organically, then uh, I was thinking that if I could introduce a network uh, agent sort of, uh, or a particle system as you were saying, mm -hmm. And then that grows into different machine parts. Like I have only worked on the structure, but there could be many other uh, parts that can sort of finish this as an organism, a living machine sort of thing. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, actually that, it seems that you have a kind of a career, career but you, you know what inspiration you are having and what direction you want to go. And then in that case, you uh, totally should go although so so i right now i don't have exact any tutorial example to do that but i have each component to do that so it's kind of matter of uh integration of existing algorithm so but but you can start from i mean from somewhere from here you can start introducing so so right now you we are using the uh, clock stack algorithm uh, for a hierarchical system but you yeah. can start introducing the particular system somewhere somehow and then even the some of the comments I gave before about uh, uh, start in integrating the particle system or as body of agent, meaning mm -hmm. once your your agent is made out of particle, they can move. They are pushed by force or uh, influenced by gravity. Uh, yeah. You could uh, do that as well. And then that kind of so those those getting closer to actual cell growth system as well. So then yeah, more biological. But if you maintain the ma uh, machine type of basic, you kind of need to maintain the geometric relationship. That might be another kind of agent relationship. Like after you grow 90 degree system, there might be some other agent or some, well, that, that agent try to maintain the 90 degree something. So, but anyway, so yes, uh, I think yeah, your uh, idea seems to be interesting and then you should totally try that. And uh, then yeah, if you, uh, get technical difficulty, uh, let me know. Yeah, I also wanted to say that uh, uh, I I was just going through the tutorials and uh, it's a really interesting uh, library that you created with a lot of potential to use. So uh, thank you very much for that and for oh, your- Thank you for saying that. Yes. Sure. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, yeah. It's a comment and you wow up. Yeah, that, that was great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Then I think that's the last person, unless there is anybody who wants to jump in or who actually has any work or uh, I don't see much. So then uh, if, uh, if not, let me, let me conclude the, let me give the, uh, the workshop and then so so okay again uh, thank you very much for the participation and the, all, all the hard work and then uh, like all, all the effort to go through the tutorial so 
I help you run a lot, and you can kind of keep doing or like you can go further. Not not necessarily processing or algebra library or this uh, uh, clock stack algorithm, but just in general in computational design. So this, I mean, this is just one type of uh, one specific technique in computation design, but uh, the way of thinking is kind of a universal you can apply. Well, it was like design thinking, like how you think about the parameter in relationship to the design you want to achieve, etc., and what outcome versus micro move. So those things should uh, would be useful for uh, further exploration in design uh, practice. Then, uh, oh, and then uh, before uh, the final comment or anything or closing statement, that uh, just as a kind of housekeeping uh, thing. Uh, uh, for the submission of material, please submit the uh, presented material or uh, animation. And if you had separate animation, send me either you can compile them together later and then send me one animation. Or if you uh, don't think you can do that by the end of the day, you can just send me the uh, separate animation as well. And I need to combine. Or separate image, you can send me. But basically, send me the uh, animation. Uh, the code, processing code you use at the end, or well, actually you can, if you are animation contains several different uh, simulation, you can send me all the code you have. And also the, as I mentioned, the geometry, the saved geometry are saved in Rhino 3DM file. And if you have problem um, saving, I mean like a crashing, uh, tell me the what, which code is the one you want to generate the uh, 3D geometry and then what time frame you want to generate, like a 10th time frame or 100th time frame. But actually, most likely, the, most likely the, some, of, some uh, participants are having problem and that is most likely because uh, uh, IGO library generate Rhino version 4 file. And then uh, that Rhino version 4 file, when you open in Rhino 6, that gonna force that error message. And if you open the Rhino five, uh, it can open. So most likely, when you are saved the file, is working. So even if you cannot open that, uh, try to save that. And then even if you cannot open the uh, geometry in Rhino six, send me that Rhino five. So okay, uh, again, so the video on the processing code and then three D geometry, please send me uh, by the end of today, like uh, within next you know, five or six hours. So that and then now so okay so we, we are uh, now finishing the workshops and then yeah, again i really appreciate your participation and interest uh all the participants and uh, even like uh even the auditing people or even like the youtube uh auditing people and yeah so so again i hope you learn something plus if you are running uh still and then yeah i and then because those recording might stay on YouTube and that can become, become the tutorial material. So yeah, you can keep going. And then uh, from here, you can go further in different algorithm or different uh, coding platform, etc. So yeah, I hope you keep doing and um, go uh, further design exploration to find more amazing design in the future. OK. Uh, Thank you, everybody. So let me finish here and then uh, see you next time, hopefully, somewhere. All right. Bye.